Okay. Um, well, several raccoons, I guess. I did this little sketch of raccoons and balloons. That's the theme for today. So, uh, what I want to do is basically just start coloring this as people trickle in and answer all your questions. Um, I'm going to post this on YouTube and probably Twitch afterwards so that you can reference it for the future. Uh, and everybody else in the future years who go to the residency, um, I want people to have resources to go to. And I want to make this like the mega stream of answering questions so that you guys can have them all at once. Because um, I know I've done many streams and... <laughs> Anthony's here. Uh, many streams that have pieces of advice in the peripheral, but I want them to be somewhere all together um, so that it's easier for you to get. <laughs> so thank you, Anthony and James, for joining me so far. That's my husband and my best friend. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you are so supportive. Um, but at the moment, I'm just going to start painting because that's what I want to do right now. Um, but, you know, people who are going to apply for the residency, not Anthony and James. Ask me some questions. <laughs> yeah, I like this pattern. It's it's going to be cute. James said it was going to be a cute pattern. Uh, the last one I did was bunny rabbits and cinnamon buns. So it was bun buns. And this one's going to be raccoon balloons. Of course, plants are there because they make everything flow nicely. So I'm trying to think of what kind of color scheme I want for this. Anthony asks, how do you become cool like you? That sounds a lot like some of the questions I'm getting on Instagram. <laughs> how do you do that? Um, I, I would go to Stephanie and Bill and ask them what they did to make such a perfect creature. <laughs> Those are my parents. Um, but no, really, the residency was a lot of luck, and I really cannot believe that I'm here. Um, but you know, everybody says give yourself credit and all that jazz, and hey, we did work hard to get here, but uh, I can't cannot take credit for it as if I deserved it. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep an eye on the chat, but sometimes I look down for a while, so just uh. Make sure that I see what you uh, want me to see. Like, if you need to, just repeat it. And right now, I'm just going to start throwing on some colors and see what I feel like. Uh, I don't really have a color pattern in in my mind yet, but I am loving. Uh, I have this Pinterest page open of reference. I always make reference pages for what I'm working on, and there are so many cute patterns to find, and these are just beautiful. I love them. Uh, but especially this one with the uh, like little light blue and light pink, very pastel, but it's got a lot of sharp shapes in it. It's so cute. And I absolutely love how uh, on this elephant's ear, the overlapping ear is kind of like a multiply layer and you can see through it. I love that. Uh, so I might kind of integrate some elements like that, um, especially with the balloons overlapping. I thought it would be really fun to play with transparency. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of the thought process that I'm going through right now. So let us continue. Anthony said, there's a third person. Five. <laughs> the numbers go up and down a lot. So uh, you'll see people hop in, hop out. But um, if you're here, I encourage you to talk to me because I'm here for you. Uh, but, you know, if you just want to watch some painting happen, that's totally fine, too. Um, but I'm hoping that we can get some some stream answers uh, for the residency. I'm just going to play with some abstract colors that I feel right now. Uh, if you can't tell it by my voice, I'm kind of tired and I'm a little bit like calm. So I'm hoping this can be a chill stream where we can just kick back and vibe. I think since there are multiple balloons, I either want to go with like a lot of pastel colors or I want to go with analogous kind of color scheme. Maybe analogous because this is a pretty busy pattern with a lot of stuff going on. Um, so if we keep the colors a little bit similar to each other, uh, that could keep it really harmonized. And this might not be the final layer that I keep. I just am messing around with colors right now. And usually I go through uh, first pass of laying down colors and then I 
use some like color adjustments to just change it up and figure out what I want. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. Anthony, this is the first stream you've made. <laughs> At least that I know of. But uh, he's been meaning to tune in. But you work. You're a working boy. You, you go work. It's fine. Uh, usually there's like one talkative person that I just chat with the entire time, basically. But uh, no pressure. We can all talk. <laughs> And I can just, like, listen to music if you guys want me to. And then just shut up and draw. But, uh, it all depends. I put a call out on Instagram and Twitter and seeing what kind of response that gets is always interesting. Sometimes it's like, oh, a lot of people. And other times it's like, okay, I got one. <laughs> but that's the, the deal with streaming. This is only my fourth ever stream. So, not bad, right? Oh, and also I'm using a beautiful camera, thanks to Anthony. He's letting me borrow it right now. <laughs> Anthony says, always watching, Wazowski. Always watching. <laughs> We've got a 2319. <laughs> James is literally in the other room right now, so. Weird. <laughs> hey, James. <laughs> Wonder if you heard that. He probably did. But I've got my noise-canceling headphones on right now, so I can't hear him, even if he's screaming. <laughs> it's not creepy, right? All right, just loosely coloring in some leaves because it's easy. Yeah, James, he heard that. <laughs> hey, we've got six people. I think that's a record. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I'm just painting some raccoon balloons. And uh, I want to talk to you about the residency, so if you have any questions, you got to just shout them out to me. Um, I might just start talking mindlessly about questions that I've already gotten uh, and giving some advice while painting these guys. So if you want to listen to that, cool. If you don't, totally feel free to mute me. And then, you know, sometimes I just uh, put on Twitch streamers and I pop in every, like, 10 minutes to see the progress that they've made and, like, learn something from it, so... Totally valid. However you watch, you watch. And you know, when I was drawing these little um, balls in here, I was thinking berries. And then I thought, what if Anthony's on the stream and he says that it looks like poop? I better paint it early so that it looks like berries. <laughs> uh, Anthony says, are you using the camera and headphones I gave you? Yes, I am. This very, very nice setup is all courtesy of Anthony. Basically, everything in my life is courtesy of Anthony, <laughs> uh, except for this beautiful Wacom and HP setup, which they gave me. So thank you to them. Sorry, I hit the microphone. Anthony said, or James says, anyone who has questions about the Adobe Residency, this is the chance for live answers. We're doing it live. Anthony says that almost looks like poop. Almost. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is the, the chance to ask live questions for the Residency. I mean, it's not like the only chance, but... I'm, I'm kind of being inundated with a lot of questions lately, so I want to have a place where I'm productive in answering them, because I could honestly spend hours answering all the questions that you guys have about the residency. Um, and I would love to if I didn't have another job. <laughs> kind of got to make stuff happen. Uh, especially because I have SCBWI coming up in New York, uh, February. Do you guys know what that is? It's a children's book convention and it's super fun, but I have a lot to do for it because not only am I doing like the portfolio showcase and uh, networking with people while I'm there, I am giving a presentation about what's new for Adobe and Photoshop and stuff like that. So if you're going to be there, there's going to be a little impromptu session where uh, I show you what's new. So that'll be cool. But I also have to put it together. Anthony says, when is the due date for the applications this year? Good question. Uh, they are open in an exact month. They opened on the 7th of January, so they will close on the 7th of February. Seven's a great number, most magical one, so they, they picked a good one this year. <laughs> I think they did a smaller application period this year because they're going to have a lot more applicants. Like, every year that it runs, it just gets bigger and bigger. Um, that is not to deter you in any way, though. I thoroughly believe that the right people are always going to be out there, and no matter how many people apply, they're, the right people are going to get it. 
Um, and Adobe has a really good system for finding people, and I will tell you about it. Anthony says 11 is also a good number. I'm just saying. <laughs> the 11th is notorious for being the best number because it's Anthony's birthday, June 11th. Everybody say happy birthday to him on that day. Okay, it's very important. Don't forget. Also, every single day when it's 6, 11 o'clock, you have to text him saying happy birthday time. Mandatory. This is what being his friend is like. James says 11, 11 is the best time too. It's true. James really likes repetition. All right. So um, let's get into residency stuff. So uh, let's see. On the live stream today on Facebook, it was a little bit glitchy. So I hope you guys, you know, didn't have too hard of a time hearing me, but um there were questions about like what was it like to get the residency and uh what what can make your application stand out and stuff like that like what should basically just like how do you get the residency <laughs> which i totally understand that question it's just uh there's a lot to the answer because i have so many tips um a lot of what I have already said is in a YouTube video, or actually two YouTube videos that I put up, so feel free to go check those out too. Um, but the main things, okay, so me getting the residency, uh, it was awesome, and it was, uh, sorry, I'm blase about it, it was awesome. No, it was life-changing. It was the best thing that's ever happened to me, but um, the process itself is... Uh, well, actually, I was having a really bad day at work, and James and I worked at the same place, so we were both just like, let's go home and make dinner and like watch TV and forget this day ever happened, that kind of thing. And then I got this email right before heading out the door, and I was like, James, James, <laughs> they emailed me, you know, like in an email from Adobe, and this was Julia, who is now my manager for the residency. So right from the get-go, I was in contact with her, and she said... We uh, want to talk to you about your application. And I thought, like, is this it? Are they just going to say, like, you got it? Because I had no idea how many steps it takes. Um, so they actually, she video called me. I thought this was going to be an interview. So I had so many things ready where I was like, I have my pitch. I, I'm so ready to talk. I'm going to, like, say this, this, and this and make sure she knows, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and none of that happened. She basically said, do you have a pen and paper? Okay. And then talked for like 20 minutes about what she wanted me to change about my uh, proposal. And like not change as in like they want you to change the essence of who you are, but I wanted, or they wanted me to uh, clarify like what um, the timeline was going to look like. And could I have multiple angles of the same story where it's like, does it have to take place in Halloween or could it be like based around something else? And I was just super all over that like I love um, getting kind of editing feedback and fulfilling what they want and that is something very important I think that's why they asked me is because they want to know that you can take criticism and edit your stuff and actually like listen well and figure out how to give them what they want Anyway, so uh, after that, they flew me down for interviews, which was insane. It was like two days that I was down in San Francisco, and uh, it was just a completely surreal experience where I felt like, where am I? What am I doing? They paid for the flight in the hotel. I've never had treatment like that in my life, so it was like, <gasps> like I'm literally in Wonderland. And then eight hours of interviews with people who are super nice. My first one was with Renee. She's the head of the drawing and painting department. Super, super wonderful woman. And she just like, she just immediately felt very relatable where she's like, I am a kid that's grown up. Like, I love candy and adventure time. Like, I instantly was just, oh, I love you, Renee. And I still love her so much. She's fantastic. Uh, and uh, we actually got to go to Icon after that. So it's not like you see these people once and they go away. I've seen all of these people that I interviewed with multiple times. Uh, and they all just wanted to hear my pitch and uh, basically like what kind of goals I had for the residency. And immediately Renee told me like dream big because these people like it's not necessarily that it's going to happen. They want to know that you can push yourself to go the furthest you possibly could with this idea. Like, if I'm making a children's book, what if it became an animated series? What if it became a movie? You know, like, dream as big as possible. And they love hearing stuff like that. So that's a tip for anything. And then uh, after the interviews, I flew back and felt like, 
okay, now the torture begins. I have no idea when I'm going to hear about this. I think it took a few weeks until she called again. And I was like, this is the call. This is it. And nope, she wanted to know uh, if I could get her a list of references to make sure that I'm not psychotic or, you know, that I am a horrible person to work with or anything like that. So I gave them to her. Uh, she actually happened to know one of them, Ty Carter, who works at Blue Sky. He was my mentor a few years back, and uh, she knows him from BYU. So I was just like, what what, what small world is this? And uh, then the qual- call actually came after that, which was the best moment ever. But that's like the whole from beginning to end, uh, submitting into a black hole and never knowing to getting it. Uh, any stage along that way, I could have been dropped. So you never know. Um, what I love, though, is that uh, Julia said after people came down for interviews, because actually on the day that I went down, I made really good friends with the other girl who was going for illustration. Her name is Annabelle Doyle. She's a fantastic artist, and she got far enough to go to the, um, the what do you call it, interview stage. And she didn't get it, and I did, and I felt horrible about that. But Julia said that they actually gave people who got to that stage feedback on what they did or could do or whatever. So I thought that was, like, magical. Basically, the best thing you could ever ask for a co- from a company is them to give time um, to give you feedback about what you did. And it's not necessarily, like, doing something wrong. It's just something that didn't quite fit their needs at that time. And I'm still playing with color, so just hold on for the ride. <laughs> um, anyways, so that's my residency spiel about how I got it. Let's go into... Um, actually, I should look up some of these questions to make sure I answer the right ones. Hold on in a second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So the countries you can apply from, this is all on the website, by the way, so pretty uh, standard stuff, but you can be from the USA, Canada, UK, Germany, and next year, Japan. Woo! It's expanding, people. Uh, We've got four from the US this year, one from the UK, and two from Germany. And it's all just, you know, based around who they find where. And, uh, okay, then the other thing is the parameters of, like, who career-wise can apply. There's photography, graphic design, UI, UX, illustration, um, I think something else. I can't remember. Maybe AR, something like that. But those are loose terms. So, uh, like, uh, Nadine this year is doing illustration, but she is very wildly different from what I'm doing. She does AR stuff, which is uh, augmented reality. So she's using experimental uh, new prototype stuff like um, Project Arrow, and she's also building galleries out of shapes. Like she's made these styrofoam shapes. She just had a gallery opening in LA this week, and um, this last week. And uh, Oh my gosh, like so dramatically different. Um, And that's basically all of the residents. If you do some research into what they've done in the past, it's wildly different, every single one of them. And I'd say I'm actually one of the more conventional ideas of like what a project can be is like make a children's book. But then there's like uh, Craig Winslow who does light capsules and it's just like, oh my gosh, doing light projections onto buildings. I would have never thought of that. And yet he did it so beautifully and made such a an awesome project out of it and is still doing it today. Like it, it really proves that like your career can be what you want it to be. (laughs) You can just like make up a career basically. And as long as you can find people to pay you for it, man, you got it. And, uh, oh, I was still answering questions. Let's do this. Uh, did you put together a special portfolio or anything for the application? If so, what did you include? I made a slide deck for my application. Uh, there's a section where you can fill out answers where it's like uh, what what budget, what timeline, that like 
kind of technical questions fill out and then they say you can include basically a presentation of your proposal uh so i did a slide deck and that's on my behance page anna davis court uh and it's also the i said that julia called and told me to revise it so there's the revised version as well it's the one called scaredy cat and that's because that's the name i gave my book and so that's up there for review. It's one of the many ways that you can apply, but it's definitely not the only way you can apply. Uh, Aaron Bernstein, who is a photographer this year, and he uh, submitted an animation as part of his proposal uh, and also just a video of like him talking about it. So that I love. It's unique. It's really like appealing. So I would... You know, if you can push the boundaries at all of what you're trying to present, like present in the way that you want to have your proposal read, <laughs> if that makes sense at all. One of the things that I loved about finding out about the process is that the heads of each department basically get together. They read a bunch of these proposals and then they pick their favorites to pitch to each other. So if you imagine your uh, your proposal being pitched from somebody else's mouth. That's what's happening. So make it that easy to grasp then like pitch immediately. James says, oh, that note. Happy birthday time, Anthony. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> I can read, I promise. <laughs> On that note, happy birthday time, Anthony. And then Anthony said, you remembered. Thanks, James. Wow, I forgot. That's horrible. It's 621. I'm 10 minutes late, but happy 10 minutes past your birthday time. James says, ha ha ha, yeah, I just thought of it out of the blue with no reminders whatsoever. <laughs> was I talking about it at the exact time that it was happening? Is that weird? <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's, I need to be more succinct with my answers here. Do, 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 do. <sighs> yeah, basically what makes a proposal unique? Uh, it's really hard to answer because there are so many ways you could go, like so many tips I could give you and they could all be something wrong for you <laughs> because sometimes I'm like, oh, uh, be more concise. Oh, be more descriptive. But like, what if, you know, it's totally the opposite for your project. It's very case by case. The most important thing is to be true to what you want to do for a year, because if you lie about it or try to stretch, you know, oh, I, I could do this, but I don't really want to, you will be so sad. <laughs> you need to find something that is truly what you want to do. And if you don't feel ready to pitch that this year, just wait till next year. There's no rush. Um, I hope that as long as the residency keeps strong like if we keep doing our jobs really really well then it will continue to expand every year and there will be more and more opportunities for artists to get this amazing opportunity so yeah it's really hard to tell you what is going to make your uh your application stand out but making it concise and true to what you want to do are like two of the main things um just show your friends your application and see if they can make sense of it. If they don't understand what you're pitching within like the first two pages or like the first minute of video or whatever you're doing, then it's too long. It's too messy. You got to make it concise and very clear. Uh, hey guys, if you don't know what the residency is, <laughs> this is a question I get a lot. What is the residency? Uh, it's a year to spend on a project that will get your career from where it is to where you want it to be. That includes salary, benefits, basically being a full-time Adobe employee for a year. And the salary is based off of where you live and what kind of career you're going into, I believe. But just trust me, it's it's the best. Uh, I am earning much more money this year than I ever have in my life. So they don't, they're not stingy. Uh, and I know that I think at some point they ask you like how much you would want to earn or something and don't worry about that number so much. Okay. Like I, I way underbid mine and Julia said, don't ever give somebody that number again because you're worth more. And that's honestly what made me cry a ton during that call where I got it. Um, but on top of that, on top of the benefits and the salary, there are so many new opportunities to just do things you would never be able to do otherwise. You're 
instantly in rooms where it's like, oh, these people are from Facebook. Do you want to, you know, do this? Or these people are from Apple. Do you want to do this? Uh, I got to work with Wacom almost immediately. Uh, I got to do work with HP. I, you know, there are brand deals all over the place, but also people that you never thought you would work with uh, just come out of the woodwork and they're like, oh, hey, I'm that person you've looked up to too many, for many years. Do you want to chat? And I'm just like, yes. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, and also mentors. Mentors are a really big part of the residency because they are those people who help you through it, who really, like, if you tell Adobe, I'm not so confident at speaking, or like, I, I really wanted help with writing, or I need to set up a business plan for my future. Every single one of those could be a separate mentor, or it could be one magical person like I lucked into. Lee White is my mentor, and he, he basically knows everything, so just trust him. <laughs> uh, but it's one of those things where if you need help, all you have to do is ask, and Adobe will help you. And especially having Julia as my manager, I feel like especially lucky this year that Julia is managing the residency because it, it she basically is like my best friend in this. She has helped me through everything. And if I say, hey, I'm really feeling this way or that way, like she will help make it right. <laughs> uh, so once again, we're very lucky this year. Um. Okay. I'm just going to read this one. What are some things that I can do now to set myself apart? And I said, practice pitching your project so that it's clear how you'd want to spend the year. That's a really good one. Um, not only while you're doing the application is it beneficial to read it out loud, but after the fact, if they email you back, like start practicing your pitch then. I don't want you to show up to the interviews and kind of stumble over what you're saying or not be totally confident. I want you to have like a sentence or two maybe two, <laughs> to pitch your idea and make sure it's completely clear from that sentence. Uh, think, of, <laughs> think of ways that you would engage your community. Uh, that is a huge part of the residency as well, is just, I mean, it's kind of a given that you're going to be on social media, that you're going to post on Instagram and Twitter or whatever. And it's, it's important to kind of be unique in that way too. If you can do something like... Um, what was it? Julia Nimke from two years ago. She traveled across Europe doing photos based off of folk tales and folklore. And that kind of thing um, kind of lends itself to reaching out to your community, that you talk to people along your way. It's kind of like uh, uh, Laura uh, Zalinga's project this year. She's doing the beauty of age and she's taking photos of people who are much older and getting a lot of experiences from them. That can also be reaching out to your community. If you're traveling to find these people and talking about their experiences, like you can make it into a talk that people can go to, or you can um, live stream something or, you know, like there are just so many opportunities for basically projecting what you're doing already and just reaching people with it. And Adobe loves seeing that, obviously, because what they're doing is to reach out to people and tell them about Adobe stuff. Uh, and also get used to reaching out to people who can help you get where you want to go. Basically a reiteration of the mentor kind of thing. Like, if you need help, ask for it. <laughs> Very important in life as well. Um, all right. Another one, and I'm going to keep coloring because I feel like it. Do, 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 do. Actually, one second. Boop. Here we go. Uh, what pieces should I have in my portfolio? So I'm going to answer this generally for illustration because I've learned a lot about illustrators. Uh, well, first of all, for children's book illustrators, you should know about two key things, which is SEBWI, which is the Society for Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. Whew, got it. <laughs> and SVS, which is the Society for Visual Storytelling. And I say those two things not because I'm associated with them, which I kind of am with SVS. I'm going to teach with them, and I already have taught a class. Um, I say it because it is so crucial to get help with children's book illustration and illustration in general. Um you never stop learning in art. So, you know, just keep that in mind as you're looking for resources for yourself. Uh, and that is one of the biggest things that's helped me this year 
uh, is basically just reaching out for help and um, not being shy about it. Uh, so for portfolios, there are several uh, videos about how to put together a portfolio, what exactly needs to be in it. And those videos are just amazing. And I'm going to kind of reiterate some of the same things here, um, which is a good balance of things. Uh, basically, put yourself in the mindset of that person who is hiring you or looking at your portfolio. Uh, this is the same for children's book illustration, for concept art, for anything basically that, that has an art director. Try to put yourself in their shoes and say like, okay, I have a project, say it's an animated movie or show. Now, how do you know that the person can do the work that you want them to do? They have to show you. There is no way to tell these things and have somebody believe you. So, um... For instance, uh, James <laughs> actually worked at Shadow Machine, which is an animation studio in Portland, and they had him do a ton of turnarounds for the show called Dallas and Robo. And that is a prime example of like if he didn't have turnarounds in his portfolio, I don't know if they would have shown like or like found him quite as interesting for the role. Um, and he also did turnarounds for a test for them. So that's kind of an important thing to keep in mind when making your portfolio is like, what job are you going for? If you're going to be a character designer in animation, turnarounds are pretty much par for the course. Uh, if you are in illustration, um, think about editorial versus children's versus uh, like commercial illustration. One of the best ways to find that like balance is to find an artist that you want to emulate their career where you find their lifestyle really appealing i love illustration not only because it's you know feeds my soul but it allows me to work from home which i know is a goal of mine always um so that's something that was really important to me and so i decided to work toward it um so illustration portfolios are usually like 15 to 20 pieces and they uh, need to have something, especially for children's books, that's story-based. And if you have a story that you're working from, you want to have some uh, layouts that are from uh, of the same characters from different perspectives. So you're showing that you can have very different dynamic shots with the same characters. So they need to have different moods. They have to have different uh compositions <laughs> that's the word and um hopefully different lighting and coloring things like that just to make them really stand out but also make it feel like this is one story that you're telling just with very different uh storytelling elements design wise uh for other portfolios i mean i'm not an expert because i pff, i was looking for a job for a long time and didn't get it but uh i think It'll always come down to, do you have enough time to build that portfolio that's going to get you the job? Um, and the time is what we're talking about. So having enough time to do it, yes, that's one thing, but also using that time to the fullest advantage that you possibly can is so important. Um, if you can create a portfolio in six months, that would usually take a year just because of the thought processes being different like oh you're thinking very efficiently and putting down the right stuff on the paper uh that's where we want to be we want to be our most efficient selves right so <laughs> we're trying to think more efficiently and have that make up for the time lost at probably jobs that aren't going to get you there on your their own i'm gonna make another one of these guys yellow because i like that yellow being spread around uh and actually after this i think i'm gonna um here, I'm going to make part of him yellow. I'm going to throw this onto a bigger canvas so I can see what it looks like full size. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I would love to answer questions from you guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to shout them out. Doop. Doop, doop. I like it so far, but I'm probably going to do a few colorways just to see what I'm feeling the most. But I definitely like it being kind of analogous with a pop of red. So the way to do this with patterning, quick side note, is you make one flat layer and then select the whole thing. 
and I'm going to go edit. Or wait, fa no, edit. Edit, yeah. Uh, define pattern. I'm going to name it something nonsensical. Then I go to this big one that's bigger than my last file, so it'll fill this all, but it'll be the same resolution as the other file. I'm going to go edit, fill, pattern. Go to my most recent pattern saved. And then boom, we see it. Now that looks real tile-y for me. So let's see. I think I need less contrast between the background and it to make this work because I don't have a super small pattern. Some things are like, it's an awkward size. It's not super big. It's not super small. Oh, hey, Zona is back. <laughs> I'm still calling you Zona. <laughs> um, yes. Da, da, da. Hello. Whoa. That would be a fun pattern for pillows. <laughs> Laying on a raccoon balloon thing. <laughs> so Zona, I've been answering some questions. I, I'm answering my own questions. I'm just talking basically about the residency because I wanted this video to be like one of those definitive like hey, I can look at this and learn about the residency. Hopefully it's not too rambly. I think it is, but that's okay. And uh, also just working on this cute little pattern because why not, right? I think, um, trying to think of what I want to do to balance this a little bit more. One thing is definitely the background. I think because the raccoon's colors stand out so much from the white background, it's creating a little bit too much tiling. Like I can tone that down just with the color. Um, so let's just, let's try it out here. Still got it selected. So I'm gonna go edit, define pattern, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then I need a new layer, edit, fill. The new pattern. Boom. Still pretty bad. Maybe I'll lighten the raccoons also. But I might have to tweak the design a little bit to make it less tily. Um, and by tily, I mean like it, it looks obviously repeating. And I'd rather have it be kind of um, when your eyes are resting, they feel like they can go anywhere. <laughs> so it says cool I'm excited to hear and also my friend Anthony and my husband James are in the chat too so say hi to them <laughs> and they say hi to you as well I'm sure <laughs> so this is color behind no color behind I, I definitely think I like the color behind and if I go for white I would lighten this a lot let's try that and just see if it's <laughs> you guys are tatting. That's so cute. I love it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to throw a, not a curve, so I'm going to go levels on this guy. Boop. I don't need you. There we go. That's pretty cute, kind of pastel-y and adorable. I hate this background color for some reason. I'm gonna just use at it a little bit to edge it one way or the other. It's a little better. Blankets would also look cool with the pattern, and then we could have the best looking blanket fort ever. <laughs> uh, quite good, you. I think a dress would be fun too. I mean, come on, dresses with any pattern, I'm down for that. Or a cape, no capes. I already used a gift from Edna Mode today. <laughs> Make me use another one. <laughs> Although I don't wear dresses often, but I'd also like that on a tee. Blanket fort would be amazing. Heck yeah. Or a pillow fort, like you said before. I mean, <laughs> pillow, blanket, that's a question for community. Okay. Uh, I think another issue is I wish I could tilt it. I wonder if there's a way to do that with offset. So one of the best um, tools that we have for pattern making is offset. It's awesome. Um edge pixels wrap around. I don't think that would work. 
Uh, basically what it does is it pushes the whole p image to like one side, but it fills in the other side with that missing area that goes off the canvas. Um, and it does that both vertically and horizontally, depending on what pixels you have set to push. And it is super useful. You guys are so goofy. Um, one thing I might do, let's just play with it for a second and stick with me here. I'm gonna uh, duplicate this group just to be safe. I always like duplicate. That's why I have so many layers here. It's basically just duplications to be safe. And I'm going to see if I want to, oh, there's a balloon <laughs> to shrink it. I wonder how shranking it would affect everything. Probably really badly. Hmm. Because now if it tiles, it's going to be really off. So what can I do to fix this tiling issue? Well, first, let's do flatten. I'm doing it in a flatten. I'm also going to crop. No, I don't need this aspect ratio. Boop. Boop. Nope, I don't want that. There, all right. Now I'm gonna just put it on there again. Edit. Yeah, I think that feels better. The less we can see the pattern, the more it is, the better it is. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna have a raccoon inside of a balloon. That will be really cute too if I can add it. <laughs> there are two balloons that aren't colored yet, so that might help with this. This is a really important part just to analyze like what's going right, what's going wrong. So it's worth spending a little bit of time on. I think the most important ones I think this this guy who's like running into the scene could be tilted a bit. So I'm going to try doing that. And that would cut down on a bit of this horrible feeling we've got. So what I'm going to do is um, collapse this. Boop. We've basically got just two important layers that we need to offset. So I'm going to offset each of them individually because you can't do it as a group. So that's what offsetting does. Now this is all wonky. So you have to also offset it. Boom, it's there again. So I'm gonna start with the line layer. Just select this chunky boy. And I'm gonna tilt him. That feels pretty good. Uh, I'll have to play with offset. It's not a tool I've used before. Maybe try a diagonal IDK if that would do anything or not. No, I think it does. Um, I'm also going to shrink him a little bit just to make sure that he's not taking over the entire flow of the piece. And then basically just do the same thing with this rough painting. And this is why I like to do this and like reassess while I'm rough painting so that I'm not, you know, editing final artwork and making it all like, okay, I have to redo all this painting. Uh, I've got a little bit longer. I've got a ways to go. Ooh, oh. What, ooh, oh. These are pretty cute raccoons, so I have to say, adorable boys. Do 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 do. Fix this balloon a little bit, and this guy is tied right here. He's got a balloon on his tail and he's really scared of it chasing after him. So he's trying to run away real quick. And also, I'm gonna use my bristle bomb brush. Bristle bomb, bristle bomb. Doop, 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 doop. And there was another one that wasn't painted. What was it? Let me see. The one chasing after him. So it's right next to that. So it's right here. There we go. I'm going to go for 
this darker one. I'm trying to like get a balance of all the different colors that I have in here. I think one of the most unbalanced colors is the orange. I'm not really using it anywhere else, but maybe I'll use that in the future. Maybe I'll... What do you think? Spread the orange around more or make the orange into something else that's more analogous? What do you guys think? Let's see. Now I want to animate some kind of pattern. That would be awesome. <laughs> I've done a few animated things where it was like a corgi stomping its legs and stuff like that, but never anything like really intense. It's just like in Photoshop I animate it. <laughs> so yeah, save that just to make sure it's somewhere safe and sound. Hmm. I'm trying to think. That's a very difficult thing to do. Can we see it in the larger pattern? See how it flows? Absolutely. I always love doing this because it feels so satisfying to just be like, oh yeah, fill the whole area. Boom, done. Um, I, I should just make an action to do this because I swear it could be done faster. But oh well. I think that's much better, don't you? Maybe if the leaves were a little bit darker, they could also take away from the darkness of the blues, because the blues are currently the darkest thing here. So I'm going to throw on a black and white layer. Come on. There we go. So yeah, those dark bluish things are the darkest ones here. That and the red. So what I want is a nice balance of that darkness so that one area doesn't have the most contrast. Uh, it's a challenge with patterns. You don't really have a focal point, so you don't want the highest point of contrast anywhere. Um, so with that information, I think I will darken the leaves a little bit just to see. I'm gonna make them a little bluer too. And it doesn't have to be all of them. I actually really love putting uh, a little difference in my leaves where it's like not just one color. Actually, let me show you guys something I just did. Do, 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 do. Is it this one? No. Is it print materials? No. Here, let me find it up here so you guys don't have to see everything I'm doing. Um, this is a postcard that I'm working on for SEBWI. I'm gonna just send it out to some uh, people before I go so that I, uh, I can say like, hey, if you want to meet up, then let's meet up. Uh, if anybody lives in New York, I'm totally down to meet up. <laughs> let's do... Hmm... It should be in my most recent, but for some reason it's not. Oh, here. Let's do file open recent. Haha. -ha. <laughs> it's because it's in my downloads. So this is an example of how I like the different kinds of um, leaf colors in there. And so I, I've loosely written what I want to put in there, but it's not like final. <laughs> um, I'm going to get some nice text in there. And then on the back side, it's going to have this piece. So it all kind of flows together. It's the same style of leaf painting. So that's a fun one. Boop, boop, boop. Let's get back to this boy. So it, when I'm doing the final paint of this, I'll probably have all sorts of different colors uh, for the leaves. I will keep them semi the same uh, value, though, just to make sure that they read nicely. Another benefit of having the loose painting in here is that you can just lock the pixels and go to town and not worry about the edges. I think the lines could be pulled up to love the colors <laughs> or love the colors. <laughs> I have to read it with the right emphasis, the right emphasis. Uh, so you think they could be pulled up to, does that mean lighter? 
I'm guessing. That's kind of cute. I love their shapes. They're so flopsy. Uh, if you guys need to know anything about the residency, please ask me. I will answer all the questions. Make this one yellow, too. And maybe this guy, too. Am I going overboard? Maybe. That's fine. And then we can use a little bit of this pale greeny to make like a little darkness on him. How cute! He adorable. I'm wondering if the whites of their eyes could be this yellow. Tie it all in. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. Lol, like contrast. <laughs> I'll try to think of some. <laughs> Boop. Okay. So let's just pop it in again. Why not? We've made some changes. We deserve it. Anthony, are you still working? You let me know. I always wonder what a good time of day to stream is. I'm not really sure. Edit fill. Boop, boop. Hmm. Playing Overwatch? Oh my gosh, I said stream playing Overwatch. Would you guys watch that? Oh, that'd be fun. For the community part, how much does it have to relate to the other parts of your project? Because I'm starting a tutorial Tuesday series, awesome, which is tomorrow, <laughs> uh, which is just general design and animation. Well, that is fantastic. By the way, doing something before the residency just shows them that you're serious about doing it and can actually like follow through on something. So kudos. And uh, also your, uh, the community part. Let's think about that. How much does it have to relate to the other parts of your project? <sighs> My community part has kind of changed a bit. Uh, I was planning on doing an Adobe book club, which is um, connecting with authors and illustrators and really talking to them about what makes a children's book successful. Then it turned into posting about it. And then it turned into streaming, which is this. <laughs> uh, and I mean... I, in some ways, I feel like I'm failing on that front. Uh, I, I really want to talk to other authors and illustrators. It's just time. Like, it is so hard to find any time and feel like you're not burning out. Like, I already am exhausted, but uh, you have to think, like, okay, will this kill me? No. Okay, do it. <laughs> but uh, for the community portion, I think it really is open to your imagination. What they want is for you to think about, basically, I mean, community is a veiled guise of advertising in a way, because they do want you to be an advocate for Adobe products, not that you, you know, are only an Adobe person, like, you're not strictly an evangelist or anything, it's not necessarily your job, but you are somebody who is an Adobe employee, and you need to talk to people about that. Um, a, a kind of a given is that you're going to post online about it. Um, but for mine, I really wanted to talk about like reaching out to people. Um, and honestly, reaching out, it sounds like a scary thing and it sounds like a lot of work, but it's not the most work. Some people take on a whole heck of a lot, uh, compared to me and compared to some people. It's just crazy how much some people take on. But um, I would say just try to be imaginative about it. If it feels like a chore, don't propose it. Um, because you're going to want to, like, or you're going to have to, like, push yourself to do a lot of things. And if you really don't want to do them, they're not going to happen. Um, so as long as you're like pushing yourself <laughs> uh or i mean as long as you're not pushing yourself as long as you you feel like you're um you actually want to do the thing then you're you're on the right track 
Uh, do you have any specific ideas about how you want to do community engagement? Because I feel like it would be easier to answer, like, is this the right way to do it? <laughs> uh, rather than, like, I don't know, tips on how to, I guess. Because it's really hard for me to, like, say what's right for everybody. Because there's no one right way. There are a million right ways. And your right way would probably never even occur to me. So, <laughs> it's, uh pretty amazing how many people can have such different ideas and basically adobe is saying like all those ideas are valid everybody has good ideas <laughs> anthony are you saying you would watch me play overwatch <laughs> i would watch me play overwatch <laughs> but i don't know i don't know if everybody else would but hey, you know, what's Twitch for if not just, like, putting stuff out into the world for no reason? Right? Everybody behind me? Yeah. One thing I want with these balloons is to really emphasize the overlap and show some transparency. I think that's real fun. Yeah, the orange is still bugging me. I'm going to change that to something. Let's just do yellow for now and see what we like. Might need to throw the red around a little bit more. Hmm, we'll see. Let's do it again, people. Let's do it again. newest okay hmm yeah I think I want to throw the red around a little bit I'm also going to play with the background color just to see there's something else that catches my eye. One of the best things to do is just have a flat color back there and hue set. Woo. Hmm. What if we had a yellowy background and then everything that's yellow turns to like a red? Why not try it, right? Too much contrast, but we can lighten this guy. And again, these are all adjustment layers that can easily be changed, so don't worry, it's just experimentation time. And do selective color to get all the yellows to a more ready. Huh. Maybe it's just the lightest things. Why are they no effect? Oh, there we go. That's interesting. Wait. <laughs> Zona, you say? Yeah, I'm like trying to involve the community in several areas. Doing the tutorial Tuesday where I asked some experts to get involved in teaching their tips, becoming a resource since I need to stop hoarding my links. <laughs> That's really good. Also involving experts in the fields that I like to learn about. Plus, I spend a lot of time joining motion groups in, her, uh, in real life, IRL, and online. That is perfect. No, you're golden. Just, like, tell them that that's your community aspect. Boom. Done. That's amazing. You got no worries, lady. Pew, pew, pew. Why can't I get the yellows going? Am I just missing them? Oh, well. I can just paint it in. Maybe I'll even boop. Get them all like that. I know it looks weird, but we can finagle it into the right place. I 
basically I use like adjustment layers to get me to generally where I want to go and then I paint the rest over. This is feeling a little gardeny. Let's just see what it looks like. Just to see. Um, oh, we've got a new incomer. Hi. <laughs> uh, all right. Lynn. Hi, Lynn93. Hi, Anna. Do you have an insight into what they look for in the PDF? Length, words versus visuals, minimalist versus designed. Um, OK, let's see. <laughs> Zoner, you're good. Don't worry about involve. You're so golden with that kind of idea. So Lynn, um, what they look for in the PDF length, I would go no longer than 10 pages. Personally, I followed Rosa Kammerer's uh, layout that she did, and it was very minimalistic. Uh, so what I did was I basically drew over it with my kind of style uh, and made everything very like hand-drawn and kidsy and cute uh whereas she had a very like sleek designed kind of minimalist approach where it was white backgrounds pictures of her lettering on signs and uh, windows and so that's a good way to approach it in my mind i think more showing less telling is always going to be stronger um if you can include something that looks like what you want the final product to be like i think that's a huge plus um for instance, when I did my proposal, I had some images that I felt like this is what I would make the book look like. Now, what it actually looks like compared to that is very, very different because I had a different style back then. But that's a year's difference of, you know, style exploration and growth. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just uh, it's a different thing. <laughs> um And uh, let's see, what were the other things? The words versus visuals. So, yeah, I think lean on the visuals as much as you can use the words when necessary and like i said before just read it aloud make sure that it makes sense and have it um basically say the most important parts first like uh what was it lee actually had a really good like way of breaking this down and it was actually uh in like in what do you call it in reference to building a children's book story you don't need all the world building at first. What you need is the story. So, for instance, Finding Nemo is a, uh, a story about a father trying to find his child. Then the second sentence of that is, it takes place underwater, they are fish. That kind of thing, like where you just strip it down to the bare bones and try to figure out what is the core that you're trying to get to them. And that's what you need to have on like your first page. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like James is saying in the uh, chat, my application is up on my Behance page, so you can see exactly how I worded things, how I did it. I also have my second version after they asked me to revise some certain things, so you might glean some information looking back and forth between those two. It's called Scary Cat, if you can't find it on there. It's it's like a few posts down, like seven or something. Uh, yeah, James, she has her application posted on her Behance page and edited application. Thank you so much for saying that, James. That was really nice. Uh, Lorva, we have new people. Thank you for coming and being here, guys. Hi, guys. Thanks for being here, Anna. <laughs> I like how you thank me after I thank you. We're so nice. <laughs> Uh, Lynn says, yes, I have definitely studied differences between her two versions. Awesome. So you've seen it. That's great. Um, so I say minimalist more than designed, but like, honestly, it's getting to the personal side of it. If you can just have this, like this little PDF reflect who you are in any way, you're much closer, you're shoe in. Um, so like Rosa is a much more minimalist, minimalist designer. She uses like white pens to draw on, uh, do lettering and stuff on windows. And that's a kind of minimalist way to approach things. I love color and like cutesy things. So that's how I approached it. Color and cutesy. Um, but like on one of the pages, it had a reference and I put, I think like three, four images, something like that. And that's, that's kind of the idea is like, you're not inundating them with like a huge reference board of everything you've ever thought of. You're picking the key references of what you think it should look like, that kind of thing. And then uh, Laura Va said, here is her final PDF, by the way, guys. You guys are so nice. Thank you so much for sending that. Um, and 
just thanks for talking to each other too. It's really nice when you guys share information because I do get a lot of questions from people. And so I'm sorry if it takes some time for me to reply. I just, there's a lot to do, man. I'm a busy lady, <laughs> especially right now. It's kind of a crazy time, but, uh, Hey, at least I'm, I'm making time with the, the streams. I'm trying to be here for you guys. So I'm really glad that you're here for me too. So we're going to fill in with this guy. Uh, for those who just uh, just appeared out of nowhere, uh, this is what the pattern was just a few minutes ago. And then I messed with the color a little bit, just seeing if I like this kind of style. Um, let me think about that. I have like some some pros and cons here. I definitely would change. I think I'm just going to throw a color balance over this just to change a few things. Um, now, color balance is a little bit um, risky because it does up the saturation of your piece after a while. So you want to make sure to keep that in check. You see that it gets much more saturated. But I do kind of like the direction it's going. This is like a warm version of it. So I might make a few versions just to see how we're feeling. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> um, just to see like, you know, this versus this. What do you like more? That kind of thing. Wow, phone's going crazy, peeps. Anything important? No. Hey, you guys are following me. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's really nice. Would you watch me play Overwatch, though? That's the real question here. <laughs> Anthony wants me to play with him sometimes, so, you know. Um, okay, Lynn says, okay, awesome. My field is video, so I've put together a five-minute overview video, that's awesome, of my project, and then some supplementary pages with my outreach ideas, influences, relevant past videos, budget, and my bio. That is perfection. Great job. Uh, Zona says, I'm trying to get some critique groups together for the residency proposal, get some fresh eyes on my ideas, and yours. Something about you and yours. That's that's awesome. Both of you rocking it. Oh my gosh. Uh, I think that having um, having anybody get eyes on your project is like a hugely beneficial thing. Uh, Anthony and James were definitely my go-tos for getting a lot of reflection on my piece and then also just like spell checking. We were seriously like, it was probably a half hour before it was due that I submitted it. And <laughs> she... Uh, she wants your ideas too, weirdo, Anthony says. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I am up for like seeing ideas. And actually, some people have sent me their proposals already and I've given feedback. It does take time, so I don't want to do it too much because it's just like I, I physically can't look at everybody's. But like, you know, my emails on my uh, my social media is I think it's on Twitter or something. It's just my name at gmail.com. And if you do want to send me something where you're feeling like you have a specific question, um, cause please just don't send me something and say like, what do you think? You know, <laughs> like I, I can't like answer that in a succinct way and it would take me forever to get my thoughts together. So like, if you know, you think like, Hey, on page three, I have an issue where I, I can't say it or, you know, I can't think of how to say this succinctly. I would love to give you feedback on that. Um, but it's, it's a good exercise, actually. The quickest you can get across to me what your question is, think of that for applying to the residency, too. The quickest you can get across your pitch. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this pattern here and consider. Consider the following. I'm also going to throw a color balance over this and just see how I'm feeling. In certain ways, I like it, and in certain ways, I feel like it needs to be a little bit lighter, which is kind of crazy because it's already really light. Well, I've got a little bit longer. I've got a ways to go. Can you tell I've got a song in my head? James, name that song. <laughs> I like to think of it as... Can I pitch my idea clearly in a tweet? That is perfect. You have to use that. If you become like the resident for next year, you got to be like, can you pitch your resident in a tweet? <laughs> it's your tagline. Because <laughs> that is a really good way to think of it, honestly. Okay, I think I like this a little bit better. It's just slightly warmer. And then this one. Here, I'm going to group these guys. I don't want to collapse them yet because uh, this isn't... 
like the final version, I would go back to the original, this guy, and apply it to this. So no collapsing yet. All right, what do you guys think? We're gonna vote. So this is blue and this is yellow. Tell me in the chat what you guys think I should go forward with from here. I still might change it, but what do you like better? And hopefully we'll have an overwhelming consensus. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Zoni, you say, I don't know if that's actually helpful or not, but to me, it feels like it is. <laughs> I'll definitely keep it in mind if I get it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, oh, yeah. Here, I'll show you blue again. <laughs> People are saying yellow so far. Uh, so, yeah, I'll flip between them a few times uh, just to give you feeling. Whoop, whoop. And there will definitely be changes. Like, I'll make it not so harsh on the eyes or anything so don't worry about that um they do have very different moods this is the unfortunate part of like trying to pick at this stage it's like you could go two dramatically different ways and i could make like three other color ways <laughs> i just feel like if we're already torn between these two then i don't know I think one of the big questions is, should the raccoons be lighter or darker than the background? I kind of, I don't know. This one definitely makes me feel calmer. And then the yellow one makes me feel a little bit jazzed. And like, I, I like some of the colorways because they remember, remind me of Taryn Knight's pieces where it's like almost a brownish undertone to everything. Um, but anyways, you guys are the ones who are voting, so... James says, the animals stand out better on the cool one. Uh, play with the values on the yellow one? Sure. I will play with values all day long. Let's see here. Whoa, whoa. Ah! James is going to make a guest appearance here and uh, mess with my values for me. Right, James? Right? <laughs> <laughs> he's my husband and he's literally in the other room for people who don't know <laughs> and feel free to ask questions about the residency in the chat because I want to answer them all the questions um Anthony says make them dinosaurs I really need to make a dinosaur pattern okay I'm writing that down so okay so the the themes that I've been going with are uh bun rabbits and like sweet buns so that was the bun buns and then this one is raccoon balloons and so what could be dinosaur and then something that rhymes with it dino pattern you know it could be like hearts and stegosauruses because you know i love that my pen's running out of ink maybe it ran out of ink oh come on you're, you're almost there baby come on give me some ink wow it is really dead Okay, let's see. Ooh, 99 U pen. Ooh. Dino pattern. Boom, got it. That will be done. <laughs> James refused to come out. <laughs> How dare you? Um, one of your future patterns for sure has to be dinosaurs. It's gonna happen. A dinosaur connoisseur. <laughs> <laughs> Just like really hoity-toity dinosaurs who are like, I love chocolate, but only fine chocolate. Get that Hershey's crap away from me. <laughs> that's what I think of a connoisseur. <laughs> that's because that's what I love. Fine chocolates. Uh, Lynn, could you talk about the timeline between applying your first interview, your interview at Adobe, and then getting it? Uh, if that's how it happened. Well, <laughs> absolutely. So I, I kind of went through earlier in the stream uh, what the process was, but the timing of everything, I'd say from applying to getting the email about it was, oh gosh, James, maybe you could help me remember. I think it was almost a month. It was probably a while. Um, <laughs> fine chocolate dinosaurs with hats. I love it. Oh my gosh. Um, so... It was pretty excruciating every single step of the way. They make you wait just long enough to convince yourself you didn't get it. And honestly, it's best to convince yourself you didn't get it because then nothing's lost. If you convince yourself you did get it, you'll feel really bad if you don't. So anyways, um, that was probably about a month. And then uh, the 
next step was uh, revising it. They gave me five days to revise it. Then I submitted that. Then they called me back to go for an interview probably like two weeks after that, two or three maybe. And then after that... At which I actually did write all this down in my little journal, so I could go and get you, like, exact times, but I'm just giving you estimates. Um, so then I went to the interviews, which was, like, two days in San Francisco, and then came back here and waited for probably three weeks. And uh, that was a very, very much torture. Excuse me. Ooh, burpee. And uh, I remember... I met Aaron Bernstein, actually, the day that I was at the interviews. He interviewed the same day, and that was awesome to have somebody to just, like, be buddies with and to actually see go through the residency full on as well. Um, none of the other residents got that. They didn't have other people that had gone through it with them. So that was a really cool thing for me. Anyways, uh, then, uh, so we I think we texted a few times, like, have you heard anything? No. And then we're just, like, sad face. <laughs> Oh, we're still waiting to see the torture. Uh, and then after that, it was the call about the references. And then probably a week after that, I think it was about a week after that, she told me that I got it. And then we had two weeks to quit our jobs. And then we flew out to 99U, which was our week of like orientation and everything. So they started giving us speech training that week. They had us uh, basically go through meeting all the teams, like social teams and like uh, lawyers and like figuring out like, you know, what rights we had and all that jazz. Um, all of it really beneficial and wonderful. And uh, they even gave us this planner. Okay, this planner is the best thing ever. <laughs> uh, I've covered it in a bunch of stickers, but it was like completely black and it says Adobe Creative Residency. Oh gosh, you can't see. 2018. And it has basically like so much information, uh, Adobe values and like, I don't want to hear, yeah, uh, expenses and a hardware policy and like really important stuff. Um, there are some like emails and stuff in here that I don't want to show on stream, but um, there are just so many beneficial things in here. And then of course they have uh, like month in review planner kind of stuff. And you see a like wrote everywhere in this. <laughs> um, and so we keep track of a lot of different things in this and it's something that they put together for us and I just can't thank them enough. But yeah, it's generally like a planner is the bulk of it. Um, but it has tons of information. That's where we found out that we get creative cloud for the rest of our lives rather than just this year. Uh, that was a crazy concept to us because we were just like, yeah, we get it for this year. That makes sense. And then Andrea one night was like, turn to page five. And we were like, okay, what? And uh, she was like, just turn to page five. It says we have creative cloud for the rest of our lives. And we were just like, <gasps> what is this resident? And that was like one of the first waves of like, this is better than I even thought it was. I thought it was amazing. I didn't know it was a unicorn. Like, holy crap. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, so the, sorry, to get back to the question, uh, the entire time from when I submitted to when I knew I was the resident was probably about two and a half months. Um, so it's a long time and it's excruciating. And... I feel like there should be therapy for people specifically who get really far but don't make it all the way because that kind of heartbreak is very unique and horrifying. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm just so sorry to people who don't get it but just like always saying like apply again, apply again, apply again because the chance that you get it next year is worth any time spent on it no matter what. It's always going to be the best thing that could ever happen to your life. No question about that. It's the best. Okay, <clears throat> back to the chat. Uh, fine chocolate dinosaur, wait, fine chocolate dinosaurs. Now I'm thinking of dinosaurs made of chocolate, yum. Uh, but I don't wanna eat them if they're alive. Mmm, Candyland, mmm, sugar rush. Anyways, uh, it makes me think of Meet the Robinsons, which is the one movie that like I haven't seen and I need to see real bad. Everybody talks about Meet the Robinsons is like the best. Uh, I do know the tiny arms because the little, like, T-Rex can't do anything because it's a tiny arms. It's too good. Uh, yes, you love planners. Planners are the best. I felt just so, so overwhelmed when I saw that thing. I was like, you made this for us? 
Uh, and I hope they keep it up every year and like redo all the information and everything. I know it's a lot of work, so I appreciate them doing that for us. I'm so excited and happy you got the residency. I am too, and I want you to get it. I just, uh, it's what every artist needs. It's what everybody should have in their lives. It's such an amazing thing. I mean, I want like all my friends and family to have it too, which is like, I know it's impossible, but I really just feel like everybody deserves this kind of boon to their life. Like it is just such a huge, amazing thing. Okay. Uh, let's look at this in small scale. Bring these guys over here. Boop. Oh, wait. Ooh, cancel. You know when you almost close that file that you need? I do that. 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 Uh, Laura Va, Laura Va, Laura Va, <laughs> uh, says, awesome. Do you know how many people got an interview? Oh, I asked this question and they didn't give me an exact answer, but we guesstimated around 20 in the U S so that would be, oh no, my camera's running out of battery. So I have to wrap this up. Darn it. Okay. Um, so that would be, uh, 20 in the U.S. They had other people in U.K. and Germany. I would guess around 30 people interviewed altogether. I mean, that's maybe more, maybe even 40. That would be a lot of people to go through. But um, they're really looking for somebody who it has a presence in person. Like, you know, you can't just be, hi, I'm okay with if you pick me, but like, it's okay if you don't, you know. They need somebody who's like, I believe in this, and this is my idea, and this is why you love it, <laughs> you know. Um, so you do have to kind of have that salesman kind of self to you, but um, in a way that they picked you to be at the interview, so you just got to be there for them. Uh, Lynn says, this is an oddly specific question based on my current job, but do you remember the timing between them telling you they wanted to meet you in person and then actually getting there? Oddly specific question, yes. <laughs> uh, so the time between them telling they wanted to meet you in person. So this is the call about the interview. I'm guessing it was about a week. Uh, distance between them calling and saying, hey, fly down to San Francisco. I'm in Portland, so it wasn't that big of a flight. It's like an hour and a half. Um, but it was something that uh, was obviously unprecedented in my life. I've never had a hotel and flight paid for. Um, and so, yeah, that that was probably a few, few days to a week to just say like, hey, we're booking you on April 22nd. Are you free? And I'm like, hell yeah, I am, you know, <laughs> um, you kind of just have to make the time for it because it's a life changer. Also, Creative Cloud for Life is incentive enough to apply, right? It is crazy what we get. Honestly, like, I hope that every year from now on gets this stuff, too. It's just I always feel like I am the luckiest person to have gotten this exact timing with everything where it's figured out so much that like I get the best of everything and I hope it keeps going uphill like it keeps growing and growing and growing um, but no matter what I, I know I got the best of what I could possibly get out of this like I have no regrets or downsides at all it is a lot of work but it's all work I want to do so there's nothing bad I can say uh Laura Va says wow that's amazing thank you thank you you guys are so nice. <laughs> Zona, cool, cool. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking like uh, Abed and the in community. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Honestly, I'd just be excited to get an email. You have no idea. I, like, I had seven emotional breakdowns in that one day of having the email. I just, and I, I get it every day, like this wave of, I got it. <laughs> like, I don't, I've been like living this life for a while and I still feel like I got it. What? How did this happen? Is this my life? Uh, so it's something that, yeah, just never take it for granted. And I don't think you can. Because if you've lived a hard life of being an artist who's trying to find work and pay, that you know the feeling of getting this and feeling the appreciation that like this company wants you and they want to pay for you because you are worth their time and their money. That's so rare. That is so so lovely to hear and to feel it's the best 
Uh, Lynn says, do you know how many they'll want total for this year? Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, so I always joke that, like, so next year it's going to be 20, right? <laughs> uh, I really don't know if they're going to go much more because it's already at capacity. Like, Julia is the manager for the U.S. and Germany, and then... Uh, well, I guess kind of Germany. And then we have uh, Francisca, who is the manager for Germany. So Julia and her kind of coordinate. So Francisca handles a lot of the stuff that's going on in Germany and UK. And that's just necessary because when you have, uh, when you have so many things going on in each place, you can't necessarily have one person being like, yes, over in Europe, I know how to handle that. Like, Francisca handles that but they do have to correlate on a lot of stuff like everybody got together for Adobe Max which happened in October and that will happen every year because it's a huge Adobe thing and so it's one of those like expanding is really hard if anything it would probably be eight people next year but uh like for some of the sections where it's like illustrator photographer UI UX like I'm an illustrator. Nadine is an illustrator. So they picked two illustrators this year, basically. Um, so it's not necessarily like they they can't have more than one per category. But the expansion of each person, each person is so much money and so much time that it's really hard to expand. Um, but I know my battery is dying. Um, <laughs> I will always push for it to be more every year because more people need to experience this, even if it's just one more at a time. Uh, okay. D <laughs> James says, Julia is amazing. We should all know this by now. Julia Tian is a goddess and she deserves all the praise and all the love. <laughs> Uh, Julia looks so dope. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She is from the brief stream that Andre did. Yes, Andre's stream was fantastic. I really am so sad that my phone wasn't working for that for some reason. I have no idea how to join live stuff on Instagram, apparently. But um, seeing Julia on there, I was just like, she'll always be a friend of mine after this. I just wish she could be my manager for life. But uh, I know we'll be friends forever. Like she's just amazing. Um, and I mean, I can't ha thank her enough for all she's done for me, but, uh, I also thank Renee cause I know that Renee was one of those people who really, uh, voted for me when I was applying and I, you know, everybody at Adobe, <laughs> thank you, Adobe, <laughs> praise Lord Adobe. Uh, okay. James says, good eye, Anthony, <laughs> mayhaps time to change to the webcam. Uh, Zona says this, that stream was amazing. I learned so much and everyone was really cool. Yes. I like the coolest part. Okay. You could say everything's cool, but one of the coolest parts is you get to be a part of a family. All these people that you're like looking up to from the residency in past years, they become like your brothers and sisters or cousins <laughs> from the years past. They're more like cousins, but everybody you're in the year with, they are your family. They would ride or die. You know, it's, it's a really tight click, and I love that. Uh, Lynn says, with making the budget, is there like a limit we should keep in mind, keeping it reasonable or shoot for the stars? Uh, I think idea shoot for the stars uh, with uh, budget, just do your research. That's all they're really looking for is that you're researching what could possibly cost something. So you're not just throwing a number out there from nothing. You're looking things up so that you have a reason for saying a certain number. For instance, I was thinking like I might print some book dummies and send them to people. I might, you know, have full scale production at the end of the year. So I would go to um, I think it was Edition One is a website that does book production for like really nice book production. And uh, I just put into their calculator. What if I were to print a thousand books and then I would say one thousand books equals this number. And so they see exactly why I put that number there. It's not just arbitrary. But I wouldn't be afraid of too high of a number. They understand that things cost money. And uh, basically all they want to know is that you're doing the research and putting that time in. Because in the end, if you are producing something for the residency, you're going to be the one printing it. Yes, they will pay for it, but they, they know what they're paying for. It's it's not like a mysterious, you know, thing. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's all, it's all very worth it. 
Uh, Zona said, yeah, everyone's awesome. I've met Sarah. Sarah Dietschy rhymes with peachy. She's awesome. <laughs> uh, in person. And she's so nice and amazing. Would love to meet the whole family at some point. Well, we keep talking about putting together a con where we all get together every year because we just want to see each other and like know what, what's up with everyone. Um, would putting the list of things I'd like to get in the proposal be good? I made a list of at least 10 things I definitely want to buy. Like, are you thinking tech stuff where it's like, this is what my workstation needs? Or like, I, I guess I just need an example of like what kind of stuff you want to buy. Um, basically, the rule is if it's for work, you can talk to them about it. If it's for like your personal building of things where it's like, I just want this because I like it or something, then, you know, they're not going to pay for that. It's, it's like a workplace. If you can think of like, uh, a studio would buy you a computer, but they might not buy you like a rim light to make you look good on streams or something like that. <laughs> All right. Um, put a list. Of, okay. Uh, Lynn says, like for me, as a film person, including lights in the budget, there's stuff that uh, that do the job, but then there's also lights that can enhance your project in better ways, if that makes sense. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, so that kind of thing, it would have to be talked about. Like I know, for instance, that Aaron Bernstein, food photographer, he basically bought his whole setup himself because he's like you know, this is the time to do it. And I, I just need it now. Like, I'm not going to work with brands to get it or anything like that. Um, the other option is to work with brands and say like, you know, oh, I need a camera. That's really nice. Can I talk to Canon about maybe working with them? Now, Canon in particular, apparently is very hard to work with. Like they not hard to work with as in like the people. It's just they don't have many opportunities for people to come in and be their brand ambassadors or anything like that. Um, other other uh, products like HP was super easy to work with. They were just like, hey, we want to give you all this stuff. Yes, you can, you know, review it or whatever. But like, we just want to ha have you have it like they're amazing. <laughs> um, and so things like that, it just depends on the brand. And for work setups, it's not a given that Adobe is going to buy it for you. They give you um, they lend you an iPad and a MacBook for free for the year. And so they kind of expect you, if you can work off of that, to do that. But they're not going to buy you a full, you know, computer setup. You have to work th with the brands or just buy it yourself with the amazing salary they're giving you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Zoni, you were saying, like, plugins for animation. Uh, Cintiq, I'd love to buy. Uh, I have paved a little bit of a way for you to get a Cintiq possibly, <laughs> if you get it. Uh, I've been working with Wacom and they are very open to working with residents now and it is a great relationship. So you might be able to talk to them and say like, hey, if I do some kind of video for you or, you know, like I, I did a video where they wanted uh, several different kinds of experience from you know, 2D industries where I was an illustrator and they marked me as like fresh out of school, even though it was five years out, but it was fresher than other people. <laughs> um, and I did that video with them, which was kind of like a commercial. So they gave me a Cintiq, <laughs> which is very, very nice. I love that so much. Um, and I love them, but it's one of those things where you kind of have to work with them about it. What can you give to them so that they can possibly give to you? Also talk to Renee because she got me hooked up with borrowing a Mobile Studio Pro, which is a $3,000 piece of equipment that I have been borrowing ever since like April or May, I think. And um, that kind of thing, it, it's just who you know. And so if you tell people you need it, again, they can help you out. <laughs> James says they provided her a laptop for the duration of the residency, but not the work setup she has. They did help with uh, yeah setting up the brand deals with hp and wacom yeah it's amazing i seriously can't believe this setup that i have right now would probably take at least 10 years to have on my own like of saving up and making sure that i get like you know the right stuff for my needs i basically just talked to hp and was like hey i want to start streaming do you have something powerful enough to do that and here we are. <laughs> it's pretty dang amazing. Also, <laughs> check this out. So this is the uh, the screen that I get to look at all the time. And ooh, you can see yourself, guys. Ooh, it is 32 inches. It is massive. And this thing, like, 
I never would have thought of getting myself this nice of a monitor. And they're like, oh, you're an artist? Of course you need a dream color display. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so thank you to HP. <laughs> Whoa, Inception. <laughs> I love that. That is sweet. Wow, that's so awesome. Yeah, you guys know. Uh, yeah, it, it is beyond my dreams. Oh, and I should show you all moving you around. Uh, the Cintiq that I'm working on. Yeah, it's a 24 inch and I could have asked for bigger, honestly, but I just, I wanted the 24 inch. Oh, my camera died. Okay. See you guys visually, but I can keep talking anyways. Um, so the, uh, here, I'll just turn that off. The, uh, Cintiq and the, a uh, whole workstation plus a huge printer that can print 11 by 17 and has a giant scanning bed all came because of the residency. Like I have nothing to thank but Adobe for setting this up. And then of course the other brands that I worked with HP and Wacom, just like they were super nice, super easy to work with. I love it. The mysterious floating voice of Anna continues to narrate. Oh, you guys have no idea. I'm naked right now. Instantly. I just took everything off. <laughs> But yeah, it, uh, it was one of the best things that I could possibly wish for is uh, all the brands working with me like this. They were a breeze to deal with. <laughs> okay, so um, I have to decide, do I want to continue this stream or do I want to say goodnight? What do you guys feel? Have I answered enough questions? Are there key ones in here that I can post on YouTube and people will feel like they got everything out of this chat? Any other burning questions that you have? <laughs> Anthony, me too. <laughs> okay, so these are the two options. Oh, I'm almost, I don't know. Oh gosh, this is a really hard one. I'm going to start painting over this one just to give an idea of what colors I would go for. Demonetized immediately. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Everyone's naked. We all know it. <laughs> it's totally fine. Uh, if you can't see it, then it, it can't be demonetized, right? <laughs> I'm also not big enough on YouTube to uh, be not demonetized, so it's all good. Although, guys, I did pass 100 followers. Whoop, whoop. Oh, yeah. Exciting. <laughs> That's another thing uh, for the residency stuff. I feel like followers are kind of daunting to some people where they're like, oh, I don't know if I have enough followers to apply for this or anything like that. Don't worry about it at all. I had like nothing compared to the other residents. You know, Laura Zalinga had like hundreds of thousands of followers and stuff. And I, I'm just like here with, you know, the 2000 that I've scrounged over the years as desperately as I could. Um, so don't worry about that. That's it's not like the biggest thing. If they love you, they're not going to be like, but the follower count, you know. <laughs> Anthony says this is Twitch de debitized. <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah, that is not an issue with Twitch, I don't think. I don't know. Do, I feel like Twitch streamers sometimes get the reputation of like, oh, they take their shirts off or whatever for money. So I don't know how strict uh, rules they have here. It's a lawless land. <laughs> but um, I'm going to post this on YouTube and probably here if I can figure that out. I saw on Nick's channel, I'm friends with Niku Senpai on here. And uh, he has some videos like as a catalog kind of thing. So I think if that's a good option, I would put it on here too. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Anthony, I read that wrong. Debititized. Debititized. Something about bits. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Uh, Zona, you say I worry more about engagement than I do followers. Totally understand that. Uh, that is a battle everyone has to fight, but don't, don't worry too much about it. It's not like a stressor. It's just, uh, what would you call it? Like an incentivizer. <laughs> Gotta just think of it as a, a pro. Well, it eats your brain alive with stress. <laughs> joking, joking. Always joking, guys. <laughs> I'm just trying out some darker reds on this guy to see if I like it. I kind of like the pop of red, but I can always turn this layer. Oh, wait, I'm painting on the exact layer. Nope, never mind. I'm a Dumbo. Boop, boop. 
Boop, boop. Yeah, James, thanks for posting. Niku Senpai. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you can save at the end of a stream. Cool. Uh, you think I'd be better on my social media since that's my job, but nope. <laughs> I just did the design and ideation part. No, I totally understand that. Are you kidding me? If you uh, do it as your job, you're like 25% less likely to do it in your free time because who the heck would? I mean, when your job is already exhausting you, you're not going to be like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to work on my social media when I get home. Like, nope. No, thank you. Never. Not a bit. I go for a slightly darker version. That's why uh, some of the worst jobs, in my opinion, uh, for artists is art jobs. <laughs> I've seen it and I've lived it where you just do artwork all day that you don't love and then it's sapping your creative energy and when you get home you don't want to draw your own stuff so in a lot of ways I do feel like I should have just like you know gotten a Starbucks job to make ends meet but I also in other ways feel like it did keep my connections up so it's a real double-edged sword you know you just gotta kind of make it how you can and that's unfortunate but it's the world it's the world that we live in. <laughs> Tristan's here, everybody. Whoa. We're all naked and Tristan's here. Now now it's a party. <laughs> he doesn't get that because he doesn't know. <laughs> Sorry, Tristan. Uh, my camera died, so instantly when it went off, I was like, okay, now I'm naked. Anyways, there's, there's some uh, context for you. <laughs> Uh, Zona says, I just did the, oh yeah, it was old one. Um, it's so tiring keeping your personal brand up when you have to post oh, 10 other accounts. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I, uh, I get exhausted of social media real quick. So you are pretty much a hero for being able to do that. Amazing. Uh, Lynn says, another PDF question. I've explained why I included the influences I did, but it takes up a fair amount of space. Do you think the details are important and I should just figure out how to shorten it? Or is it just listing the creator names with images enough? Oh, it, creator names with images is perfect. They don't need to know any of the reasoning behind it. If, if they want to know that, they can ask you later in the stages. But all they need to know up front is like what the look you're going for is so that they can imagine what the output would be like and, you know. It's not necessarily that the output has to be the most beautiful thing in the world. What they want is something that they relate to, that they, they get excited about. So if you're excited about it, they're probably going to get excited about it. Um, but yeah, I would cut out as much extraneous information as possible, uh, if you can. And then, of course, the big, you know, big... Uh, way to tell if it's enough information is you show your friends and then if they get what you're saying then you're on the right track that's enough information i'm a floating voice now tristan says i could be naked you don't know you don't know me man i could be naked all the time under these clothes you don't even know <laughs> And then Anthony says, talk to you later. I'm guessing he's going. Goodbye, Anthony. I love you. You're the best. Anthony's my best friend, by the way. Say hi to Anthony. He's the best. Uh, Tristan says, all hail the floating voice. Ooh, this is what you should do with your life. I know all. <laughs> I'll tell you all what to do with your life. That's right. Risk it for the biscuit. That's too blue. Lynn says, oh, good. That frees up a lot of space. Lol. <laughs> It's all about freeing that space up, man. And if you don't feel like, you know, sometimes you might question, uh, I might have uh, too little information now. Don't worry about it. OK, the like as long as you have the meaning coming across, don't feel like you need to puff anything up. They appreciate shortness and brevity more than, you know, <laughs> there are going to be so many applications to look through this year. It's kind of crazy. Do, do, do. Uh, Ozona says you're leaving us, Anthony. What? How dare you? You can't leave here. Not without permission. <laughs> Lynn says, so I've been looking at the your application should answer these questions section of the website. What do you think are the most important elements of those to answer? Um, I'll have to look up the website because I'm not like I don't have it memorized here. Adobe creative residency 
Is that on their FAQ uh, page or how to apply? Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Plus, you want to open it up so they can ask you questions. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Sorry, guys, I'm just looking at this idea of approaching. It is a proposal through Twitter and Instagram. Oh, I like the idea of approaching it as a proposal through a Twitter or Instagram story post life. <laughs> Get it down to the shortest of social media across and then expand later. No, that is a really good way to think about it. Um, your application should answer these questions section of the website. The most important elements of those to answer most your application should answer these questions. Huh. Where are those questions? I want to know. Oh, here. Oh, those are just like the things to do. I haven't seen a lot of these pictures that they took of us at Max. It's kind of funny to see yourself and not remember where it was taken. <laughs> is that weird or is it weirder that I'm a disembodied voice? Woo! see here it's not in the FAQ right is it how to apply taking time together oh, blah, 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 blah. there's so much to read through I mean I'm glad that they have it all together it's just it's a lot <laughs> Oh man, they have the past residence. That's so fun. I needed to talk to Becky. She was another person who um, published a book and everything. So I thought that was really cool. Aha! Thank you so much for linking it. Sorry, that took me so long. Um, how the residency works. Oh, number two. Okay. Okay, what is your project and how will it help you build toward a career doing this time of work full time after the residency? That's an important one. <laughs> uh, how will this project build off of work you've been doing? I think that's a slightly less important one because basically you can show it in some images if you have old work that you'd use to jump off of. Like I had some sketches of uh, characters for the book and I was like, here's the old work I've been doing. I wanna build off of it by making more of it. <laughs> Um, how will you share your project and process with the creative community? Uh, that one is the community engagement aspect, which I do think is kind of important. I think uh, looking back in the chat, you should see what Zona's talking about because she's got uh, some really good stuff going on. Um, well, and wait, was that Zona? No, I'm, I'm questioning everything. Sorry, guys. I'm like a little bit lost in the names. Uh, 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 um. There we go, back here. Uh, but basically sharing with your creative community is almost half of the project where you're thinking like, here's the project and then here's how I share it. Oh, here, I can put this on screen for you guys. Um, uh, what will others learn from your project? That one, okay, I'm trying to like gauge them as in how important are they? Sorry, I'm gonna bring chat up here so I can keep reading you guys. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up with you guys and this at the same time. I like the idea of approaching... Oh, yeah. I can explain it to my grandmother. It's another idea. Can I explain it to my grandmother? That's that's great. Yeah. Uh, just called everyone Tristan. That will clear things up. Okay, so Tristan, you had a great idea. Tristan, you should really learn from Tristan. Uh, yes, it might not appear if you came later. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. Uh, now... What will other learn others learn from your project? I do feel like that one is almost, um, do you have a personal goal and a professional goal with this? Like if you have a personal goal, you could answer this question by saying, I want to, my, my personal goal was, 
I want to spread positivity through the world by talking to future generations and somebody would learn from my project, you know, how to spread positivity and like how to give themselves the tools to keep their hopes up and things like that. Um, but I guess, I don't know. There are so many ways to answer that question. It's a really hard one because it's, it's very unique to whatever project you're doing. Uh, what digital or analog tools will you use? That one should be pretty easy. Uh, they want to hear Adobe in there somewhere, by the way. How will mobile apps be integrated into your workflow? Uh, mobile apps are something that they're trying to push. They are also free. So if you guys have an iPad, please download them um, just to try them out beforehand. It'll give you a big leg up. But uh, basically, I said I will use these on the go. <laughs> While traveling, I will use mobile apps. When at home, I will use desktop apps or programs, you know. Um, that was basically how I answered that. Not a super important question. What will your creative process be from beginning to end? That one's kind of like a timeline kind of question. Uh, will you, you know, have uh, like a beginning and end, basically? Like what, what will you start with and what will you end with? And this is dreaming big. This is a part where you can be like, this is where I want to talk to movie directors. This is where I want to uh, work with Steven Spielberg. This is where, you know, like just go crazy with it. Um, that one is a pretty important one. I think the timeline gives them an idea of how they can fit into your process because they're the ones who are going to make that stuff happen. <laughs> Uh, what will your monthly schedule look like? Hey, that kind of fits with that. Um, monthly schedule they don't expect the world of you. Like you're not going to have it all laid out and it's definitely not going to go according to plan. <laughs> so uh, give up all semblance of planning and timing uh, once you're in the residency. But if they have a schedule, they feel like they can hold you to it a little bit more and that deadlines will be met. You can't just be like, oh, I, uh, I can't do that because it's not on, you know, like there aren't any deadlines pushing me. They just want to know you will be pushed. <laughs> Um, but I do think that the first one is the most important one. What is your project and how will it help you uh, build a career doing this type of work full time after the residency? Because basically the entire residency year is for this. It's for after the residency. What are you going to be doing after it? Because the entire year you've been spending just to get to this point. So uh, that's that's me being four months away from the end of the residency and being like, whoa, uh, but it is super important to think in that way. You are not just thinking one year at a time. You're thinking like five years at a time. And so this project, think about everything you know now and just try to base it off of that because you're always going to feel like, oh, there's something out there I don't know yet, but that can't hold you back. You only know what you know right now and you will learn as you go. So just try to guesstimate this as the best of your ability, <laughs> I guess. Okay. Uh, yeah. Tristan says 100. I've animated on my phone before. That was an interesting project. That sounds insane. So much battery power gone. <laughs> I don't know how you would do that. Oh my gosh. That's insane. Uh, don't be afraid of things changing and evolving in your project. Very, very true, Tristan. It's it's always going to change. There's no stopping it. You don't have control over that. <laughs> it do what it want. And let's see. Sorry, trying to drag some windows around. Lynn, you say so helpful. And you gave me a purple heart for my services. Thank you so much. I am really glad that that's helpful because sometimes I feel like I'm just saying stuff and I don't know at all if it's helpful for you. Um, but uh, again, I did go through and I am going through currently a pretty unique process. So just take what I say with a grain of salt. It is my process. It might not necessarily be yours. And I know if you go through this process yourself, you're going to come out of it with very different uh things that you think are important as compared to me. But this is what I'm feeling. So I'm just telling you the truth, the truth of the matter. And trying to be as open and honest as possible because I want you guys to have the best shot possible. Possible. 
And I already know some fantastic artists who, like, honestly, who have applied in the past and haven't gotten it, and also fantastic ones who plan on applying this year. So uh, I think that it'll be a really strong year, but there is never a guarantee that, like, one person will get it over another. Because I've known people who are ridiculously way more talented and skilled than I am, and I still got it. So I, I can't say that, like, because you're talented, you will get it. It's all based on the the idea for your proposal and how well you deliver it <laughs> these streams are so helpful and inspiring oh i'm so glad <laughs> i mean is it better as if i'm a floating voice do i even need a camera i could just talk talk forever <laughs> maybe i look at the camera too often and that's why i don't get as much done <laughs> But I'll need a camera if I stream some Overwatch because the whole point of it would be me freaking out and making probably a mess of things. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to take this new version and collapse it down and show it off again. Just to see if we've changed anything and if it's tended toward one over the other. Because I'm still very torn between the different colors. Do, 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 do. Did I close the other one? No. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> uh, so you guys say pasta bowl. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm going to be honest about that from now on, because sometimes I pretend like I know what you guys are talking about. And it just makes me look like a fool. So, you know, I'll try to be honest. <laughs> Boop. Whoa, that's like way darker and lighter than I thought. That's really weird. Overwatch! Yeah, that's right. I could play you some Overwatch. Some real bad Overwatch. It'd be so janky. <laughs> Either works. It's fun to see you get excited by the <laughs> but the floating voice is fun to chat with too. <laughs> I love the floating voice as a thing. Yeah, you know, that floating voice that we all have. The floating voice in your head. Wah, wah, wah. Did I change the colors when I collapsed it? Is that a thing? Hmm. Oh, is it because I had a... Yeah, I think I had this. And a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. And a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. Not that. Not that at all. No. No. Get away. I wonder if there's a limit to how many pattern, like, defined pattern things that you can do, because I've definitely done a lot. But you know what? They can't tell me how to live my life. Ooh, what? Can't do that. Fill. Boom, boom. Boom. So the reds are definitely too dark. Do I like it better than the blue? Nope, I think I like the blue better, honestly. What do you guys think? I'm tending toward the blue. I think the blue is just more calming and this is a little too aggressive for me. But please make your make your opinions known in the chat. I really do want to know. Uh, Tristan says, lol, <laughs> new goal for residency. Find the pattern limit in Photoshop. <laughs> oh, no, the limit does not exist. <laughs> that is uh, an interesting proposal. Try to break their programs. That's <laughs> actually uh, Sid Weiler when we were hanging out at uh, Icon. She, I gave her the Mobile Studio Pro to try out and she was like, I'm going to try to break it. So she loaded this massive file, like just completely full of smart objects with like even more massive files inside of them and tried painting as fast as she could with the biggest brushes she could. And she was like, it's actually holding up pretty well. <laughs> uh, it did definitely lag after a while, but it's just one of those things that like, Everything has its limit, and she really pushed it <laughs> real fast. So good for her. She knows how to push them. Oh, yeah. Sid's files are crazy. <laughs> I'm sure they are. As crazy as this. I mean, these are all just old patterns and stuff. Do you guys want to take a walk down memory lane as you vote for which one you like best? In the color schemes, I mean. So this is our old pattern. Oh, my gosh. That contrast. Oh, that contrast. Whoa. And then we've got just the sketch of it. Ooh, look at that flow. That's pretty nice, actually. And then another sketch. Let's see what changed here. Oh, yeah, I made the, the line following this guy a little bit longer so it wasn't cutting it off too much. 
Although I do feel like having lines that are almost straight horizontal and definitely straight vertical make it just boxier in general. Not that I hate it, but you know. And then this is the bunny one we did last time. That was fun. And older bunny. Ooh, without any details. That's cool. And this one didn't have any lines, and I just colored, edited it, edited it. And these were, oh my gosh, that was like the first color or pass of the bunny. Look how different that is. Just shows you, you know, glow up. Yeah, bunnies, bunnies, bunnies. Bunnies everywhere. I learned that I want to make really high resolution files for my patterns because I can't imagine like if you got to final and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to produce it on like wrapping paper or something. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we needed it this size and it's blurry. I'd be so sad. I mean, it's not the hardest thing in the world to edit, but still, it's one of those things that would make me cry. OK, so. Uh, Tristan says, I miss the days mo uh, moderating for Adobe's Twitch. Good times. Bunny! <laughs> well, just come moderate my stream, please. I want uh, somebody to chat with and to, like, read the chat to me. <laughs> I really like it when they read the chat to me. I feel like I take a second to read it every single time where I'm like, okay, now? And I'm talking. <laughs> I'm sad there's a no Adobe Twitch streams. It's Yeah, me too. Happy that there's an Adobe Live, at least. I definitely love that there's Adobe Live. Uh, it's something that, like, I wish everybody knew about. I, I know a lot of artists who just don't have a clue about this kind of stuff. And I think they're great assets, so I just want, I want more people to love it, like I do. See, close up, I love the yellow one, but I think from far away, I love the blue one. Well, I love it from close up too. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go forward with the blue if you guys aren't voting, you little you little so and so's. <laughs> Let me berate my audience, that'll get me a lot of followers. <laughs> I mean I love you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I definitely Ooh, wait. Did we try it with the red? Am I crazy? Crazy head mazy. Yeah, I guess we didn't try it with the red. Let's see what that looks like. Alt, drag, collapse, edit, define pattern, blah, 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 blah. Boop, doo, doo, new layer. And then edit, fill, pattern, newest. Boom. Oh, I hate that, actually. I mean, I don't hate it, but I like the yellow being in there for sure. Personally. Of course, you guys can have opinions, but, you know, they're wrong. <laughs> Just love giving you guys a hard time. So sorry. <laughs> uh, Zona, they used to... I mean, Tristan's saying it to Zona. Uh, they used to have a Twitch channel, but they moved it to Adobe Live. Yeah, I know. Uh, Nick was one of the uh, affiliates or whatever you call them with Adobe twitch and i just i love this one jacket that they gave him i think it had an embroidered adobe logo it looked really cool want one of those want that swag <laughs> uh, zona says i used to hang on the twitch while i worked yeah it's a really good background noise don't you think uh zona says you like both colors what a oh, what <laughs> so do i i understand uh, lens re-editing or PDF. I totally understand that. Just continual editing. Remember to give yourself breaks so that you don't go insane and you also don't stare at it for way, way too long. Um, and Tristan says, the jacket. The, the jacket? Oh, the jacket that, yeah, Nick got. Sorry, again, I, I just forget everything I say as soon as it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> yes, the jacket looked really nice and I want that. Guys, I think I gotta call it a night soon just because uh, it's like 8 and I still have to make dinner. So I don't want James to starve. James, are you still here? James is dead. No. I'm gonna. Eh, eh, eh. There we go. I'm going to make this a little bit lighter. Again, don't want too much contrast. It's a little too desaturated. 
Oh, it's because it's under a thing. Okay. Remember to turn off your adjustment layers before painting colors. <laughs> Corinne! Oh, I love Corinne. Hi! <laughs> uh, James says, yes, he's still here. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Corinne says, love the pattern. Zona says, foods. James says, waiting on making dinner until your stream is done so I don't make disrupting kitchen noise for you. <laughs> James, you think you're going to make me dinner? I'm going to make you dinner. It's going to be delicious. <laughs> uh, Zona says, I'm like hungry, but not. <laughs> I'm not super hungry, but I feel like James shouldn't have to wait for me to be done with the stream to make dinner. That's kind of selfish, so <laughs> I should say goodbye. Uh, Tristan gave us a clip that says wrong, op wrong options. <laughs> James says bang, 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 clack, clack. <laughs> Don't you guys want to hear the sounds of cooking in the background? <laughs> oh, wrong opinions. Wrong opinions. How dare you. <laughs> I love that so much. I need to keep that forever. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tristan. You are a gem of a person. Oh my gosh. It's just a clip of me saying, of course you guys can have your opinions, but you're wrong. <laughs> That's just, you know, it's the Bible of artists. Just, hey, you're wrong. So sorry. It's like when you're talking to art directors. Oh no. <laughs> okay. I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to clip this to that and clip this to that. And this is our pattern as of right now. It's not this one. It's that one, basically. Uh, and I would love to keep working on this with you guys because patterns are one of those things that I think I can do semi-mindlessly and not have too much distraction when I'm talking. So uh, I can be a floating head or I could get more camera action so you can see me excited. <laughs> uh, whatever you guys prefer and thank you so much for joining me it's way more fun when there are people to actually talk to and like you know have things to say uh, so if any of you want to volunteer to read the chat to me I would be so down for that <laughs> uh, but other than that I'll just take a second to answer everybody and thank you for joining in thank you for answering questions I will uh, try to save this to Twitch and I'll definitely upload it to YouTube um, I'm actually going to probably just dump a lot of my Twitch streams, my last three. Ooh, uh, I'm going to put them on YouTube probably all at once because I'm really bad at uploading and getting viewers. But uh, they'll be there. I've answered questions throughout them. If you need background noise, I'm here for you. And I'll just get better and better at this, hopefully. Zona says, farewell, Anna. Thank you for streaming, answering questions, and doodling. Yeah, that's right. Professional doodler. Uh, Lorva says, thank you so much, Anna. We really appreciate you. Oh, you guys are so sweet. And Corinne Elaine, my fave, uh, you get to look back through the stream and watch the whole thing, right? <laughs> no. Uh, thank you. You make it look so easy. Ha 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 ha. Uh, well, you guys are gems and I love you so much. And thank you for, you know, joining in and being part of this. So I will see you later, alligators, in a while. Oh, remember to save your stuff, by the way. Saving is very important, especially when putting together a PDF for the residency. You don't want to do it twice. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys.